This time, ladies and gents, we are going to talk about projectile motion. Now, what is a projectile? Um, this is anything that is undergoing two-dimensional motion. In our chapter in kinematics, we talked about objects that fell straight down. We talked about objects that went straight up and down. But now we get to layer in another dimension of motion. So we're going to talk about something that is moving forward while it is going up and down. The beautiful thing about physics is the mathematically the motion forward and the motion in the up and down are independent of each other and it makes the problems solvable. There's a lot of projectiles out there everything from shooting baskets to jumping motorcycles to a punted football um, lots and lots of examples and we're going to go through many of them as the section goes on. What I'd like to have you do in your notes is draw something that looks like this. Draw a nice tall place like pretend it's a cliff or a rooftop or something like that and a flat level ground down below. We're going to describe the motion of an object that is projected or hit or kicked straight horizontally off of this roof. Now this is going to produce a nice parabolic path. So after you draw that in, draw in a nice parabolic path. Yes, mine probably looks better than yours, I've, you than yours because I've done it a few hundred times. Then what I want you to do is draw three dots representing three different locations in the path of this projectile. Uh, two scattered around the middle and then one indicating right before impact because impact is a whole new ball of wax and we'll talk about that in future chapters. Now we're going to describe the motion of this object at all four of these points. When you throw something or kick something directly horizontally, what happens is the horizontal velocity, the velocity horizontal, is going to be constant. If we can ignore air resistance, and in projectile motion, we ignore air resistance most of the time for objects that are small, not going supersonic, and relatively smooth. As this object falls through the air, the horizontal velocity is going to be the same. And I'm going to put little equivalence marks on here to kind of indicate that those vectors are all the same. Now in the vertical direction, in the vertical direction, the velocity when it first just goes over the edge, the original vertical velocity is going to be zero because this object is not given any up or down motion. So it's as if it just falls off the roof. So its original vertical velocity is zero. After it's been flying a while, a while acceleration of gravity is going to speed it up and it's going to have a bigger downward velocity. After it's been flying further, gravity will have acted on it for a longer period of time and its vertical velocity here is going to be a little bigger and right before impact its vertical velocity is going to be very very big because gravity keeps accelerating the object in the downward direction as it goes. This picture is really handy but let's put this all these ideas into words. If you have a horizontal projectile and if you can ignore air resistance the horizontal velocity is going to be constant. So in the horizontal plane every second forward it's going to travel exactly the same amount of time. Also horizontal velocity being constant means that the velocity horizontal we only have one equation we can use displacement over time. That is the only equation we can use to describe the horizontal motion of a horizontal projectile. Vertical velocity the object is constantly accelerating due to gravity. So when it first goes out of the cannon in this picture Every second it goes a little further than it did the second before because it's constantly being sped up by gravity. So what equations can we use for vertical velocity? All of our lovely acceleration equations. Vf equals Vo plus At. Vf squared is Vo squared plus 2Ax. Um, X is Vot plus 1 half At squared. And lastly, X is final plus original, average those two out, divided by 2 and time. So vertical velocity, these are the equations we're going to use. Third thing about a horizontal projectile is the path. The path is parabolic. It is not a straight line because you've got a squared 
equation going in this direction and a linear equation going in that direction, um, and the combination of both of those motions, you get that curve, and that's called a parabola. If you want to know the velocity at any instant, it can be the vector sum of the horizontal and vertical velocity, or a tangent to that parabola. So, for example, when it first comes out of the cannon, if I draw a tangent to the parabola right there, well, it's all it's got is horizontal velocity. It takes time for gravity to accelerate. If I want to know the instantaneous velocity here, that's going to be a tangent there, or the vector sum of the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity. And if I add those two vectors together, I'm going to end up with something like that. Right before impact, down here, horizontal velocity and vertical velocity, and the sum of those two vectors, final vertical velocity and horizontal velocity, the sum of those two vectors is going to be like this, and that's going to be a tangent to that curve, and that's going to be the velocity right before impact. That will do it. Next time, we're going to go through a couple examples.